Jérôme Kerviel was born on January 11, 1977, in pont labbé France. Raised in a modest family, he showed promise in mathematics and pursued a career in finance. In 2000, he joined Société Générale, SOCGEN, one of France's largest banks as a junior trader in the bank's back office operations. Over time, he moved to the front office, where he was responsible for arbitrage and hedging activities. His role involved trading equity futures, which are financial derivatives linked to the performance of underlying stocks. Kerville's rise through the ranks was swift. He impressed his superiors with his mathematical skills, work ethic, and ability to navigate complex financial instruments. However, as he became more entrenched in the fast-paced world of trading, a dangerous cocktail of ambition and risk-taking began to brew within him. In 2005, Kerviel was assigned to the bank's Delta One desk, where he was responsible for trading equity derivatives. It was here that he embarked on a path that would ultimately lead to his downfall. Driven by a desire to prove himself and generate profits, Kerviel started making unauthorized trades, exceeding his trading limits and bypassing risk controls. To conceal his actions, Kerviel developed an intricate web of fictitious trades and forged documents. He fabricated hedging positions to offset his risky bets, making it appear as though his activities were within the bank's risk tolerance. Blinded by his pursuit of success, he continued to escalate his unauthorized trades, amassing massive positions that far exceeded Sokgen's risk appetite. In 2007, as Kerviel sought to make a name for himself and generate substantial profits, he began taking increasingly risky and unauthorized positions. He exploited loopholes in the bank's risk management systems and bypassed internal controls to conceal his actions. Kerviel's scheme involved a combination of fictitious transactions, forged documents, and unauthorized trades. One of Kerviel's notable tactics was known as unauthorized hedging. He would take large directional bets on equity futures while simultaneously creating fictitious trades that appeared to offset the risk. This allowed him to mask the true extent of his speculative positions and evade detection by the bank's risk management team. Kerviel's actions eventually caught the attention of Sokgen's risk management team. In early 2008, as the global financial crisis loomed, they discovered irregularities in his trading activities. The bank launched an internal investigation, unraveling the extent of Kerviel's fraudulent activities. The magnitude of his unauthorized positions was staggering, totaling billions of euros. Realizing the imminent threat to its stability, Sogjen took swift action. On January 24, 2008, the bank announced that it had incurred losses of $4.9 billion due to unauthorized trades. It was one of the largest trading losses in history and sent shockwaves through the financial industry. Guilty of all charges in one of the biggest trading frauds in history, trader Jérôme Kerviel faces three years in prison and must repay damages of 4.9 billion euros. Kerviel's actions not only caused immense financial damage, but also tarnished Sokgen's reputation. He was promptly dismissed from the bank and legal proceedings against him commenced. In 2010, Kerviel was found guilty of breach of trust, forgery, and unauthorized computer use. He was sentenced to five years in prison and ordered to pay back the $4.9 billion in losses incurred by Sokgen. However, the court later reduced the amount he had to repay to $1 million. Kerviel's case sparked widespread debate about accountability within financial institutions and the adequacy of risk management systems. It exposed weaknesses in Sokgen's internal controls and raised questions about the effectiveness of regulatory oversight. After serving a reduced sentence, Kerviel's story did not end there. He became a symbol of resistance against the financial system, 
garnering both support and criticism. Hours time, Jerome Carviel is going to stride into this courthouse and he is going to proclaim his innocence. His argument, and I know it pretty well because I spent a bit of time with him a couple of weeks ago, is that basically it took him racking up the biggest trading loss in history to get the bank to come after him. As long as he was making money, and he did make hundreds of millions of dollars for the bank before this trading loss, not only did they, he says, uh, turn a blind eye, he alleges they helped him. I want to, to prove to everybody that uh, my superiors knew what I was doing and helped me to do it, to make more money for the bank. He published a book, The Spiral, Memoirs of a Trader, in which he detailed his experiences and criticized the banking industry. He also engaged in legal battles to contest his conviction and the massive restitution order. Despite the controversy surrounding him, Kerviel's actions left an indelible mark on the financial world. His story serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition, inadequate risk management, and the potential for individuals to wreak havoc within complex financial systems. Today, Jerome Kerviel's name remains synonymous with one of the most notorious cases of rogue trading in history. His journey from a promising young trader to a convicted felon stands as a cautionary tale reminding us of the importance of ethical conduct, responsibility, and robust risk management in the financial industry.